Hello and welcome to the channel. This is Tim with Outdoors for Adventure. In this adventure, me and Ashley jump in the 2021 Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk with the new Nitto Ridge Grappler tires. We are anxious to try them out on some gravel roads. This will be our second trip with them. Yet this is the first video that we're uploading. In this particular route that we will be mapping for Onyx Off-Road, you're going to have a variety of terrain. From smooth gravel roads to gravel roads with a lot of underbrush grown up in the middle, across, and on the sides. Pinstriping is a great possibility. There are sections that have mud, water holes, steep inclines, washed out ruts, bigger stones, and rock ledge. Be prepared for all of these. Some areas, some vehicles may have to find alternate routes. A full size vehicle will have more difficulty in some of these sections. This is a very fun route. There are dispersed campsites in the area, although this is not like some of the other areas of the Washita National Forest, such as around the Albert Pike, Little Missouri Falls area. The, this area does not seem to be traveled as much. If you're using a rooftop tent, you're going to have more opportunities for choice on dispersed camping sites. But even with that, you will be dealing with underbrush. We did find an area that had just opened. It, the gate opened August 31st. There was two areas that had been cleared out for camping. This is where we stayed. Had a great site to camp. Cooked an awesome supper and breakfast and left out early the next morning so we could continue our route because we knew we had to be home the next day. The rougher section of this route was pretty slow go. I believe it was a seven mile section and it took us uh, over an hour and a half to complete. I did end up locking the rear locker on the Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk and I had already aired the tires down. Well, good morning. This is Tim with Outdoors for Adventure. We are camped right now in the Washita National Forest. This is our campsite. Now, we came into this section of the National Forest yesterday evening, and we didn't get to leave till late, so we didn't have a whole lot of time. You know, the object or the goal was to get here, find a spot to set the tent up so we can spend today exploring in the woods. So uh, it was almost dark when we found this particular spot. And in the end of this part of the National Forest where we're at, um, we did drive several forest roads. And most of the roads look like this one. And there's just really not a lot of clearings for camping. You know, it's all grown up like this over here. Now, this particular road on the map I have says it opened 9-1. Uh, so, uh, it just opened. This is, I think, the third. Of the, this is the fourth now. But th this just opened. There's a gate way at the end of the road. So, uh, at times of the year, you won't have access to this area. And I'm probably sh pretty sure that it's probably something to do with hunting. And I just googled these symbols on these trees. And the only thing I could come up with is this was a forest project. And those were put on the trees telling them to leave the trees there for a thinning project. Now, I don't know if that's actual it or not but you do see that they have cleared and cut all through here and opened it up and when you come around to the other side 
there's an area right here that they've done the same thing. So if you know exactly what that is on that tree, put it in the comment below so we'll know next time. But nothing that I found on the forest site or my other maps has any information saying that we're not supposed to be here. So we set up, and I said it was late when we got here. We cooked some supper and got uh, in the tent because the bugs got pretty bad and just spent the rest of the night, you know, in the tent. And uh, had a pretty peaceful night. The only thing we heard about, uh, I don't remember if it was about 4 o'clock this morning, was what Ashley thinks uh, was a fox. And I agree with her because she played a video of it the way they sound, and that's what it sounded like so i believe we heard a fox this morning and other than your normal night forest sounds that's all we really heard and you see this road goes on down and we did go all the way down to as far as we felt comfortable because it gets worse you know on down there and we just turned around and came back plus we was desperate for a camping spot and we did find some other spots in this area. And if we was uh, sporting our rooftop tent where we could just pull it up in the little clearing and set up, it would have been fine. But like I said, there's just a lot of undergrowth. So uh, pickings was uh, few and far between. But this one worked out great. Had to watch where you step. But other than that, we got by just fine we got a dead tree back there that's gonna come down eventually but it looks like it's gonna fall back to the away from the tent so anyway while I got you here I do have my kitchen set up and we got some coffee water going and this was a little thing that I made to haul our traction boards i've got four traction boards down there you get a little closer here i've got a shovel and there's a little ledge back there that i can set stuff like propane bottles while i'm using it and then i put these two ammo cans and i just got a bunch of junk in right now but like spices and coffee stuff that i'm using uh, back here and i've got some other stuff that's convenient to have right outside uh, when i'm using this in there and uh i used a cutting board for this table here uh i've got another cutting board inside that i actually used to cut on and uh this is our what i use for a sink and when i'm going down the road i flip this over to where this fits flush against the traction board and then i can put three propane bottles those green propane bottles inside there and shed it down on top of them so they don't go nowhere so that worked out pretty good and of course i've got the uh backpack sprayer that i use to wash dishes and rinse us off and, and stuff like that if i need to i can slide paper towel over these arms a roll of paper towels or i can hang a dishcloth and i've got some lights wrapped around each one of these arms that i can plug into battery pack and create some light uh, and of course I've got the roto pack over here for gas uh, and I've like right now I've got this trash bag hanging off of that arm so that worked out really good now when those arms close they push in and I got a piece of pipe that slides over both of them and padlocked and then you can't open the lids on these so that's what that's really for but they just have kind of a multi purpose use but uh the only way i think that this could be better is if it actually to get my tailgate i have to pull a pin and it tilts down if this was a swing away and it swung out kind of like the wrangler jeep door you know come out this way it would have been better and i may make one like that and then when it swings out this part would actually be on the inside and you could stand have your table over here and then your swing out over here and you'd get in the middle and work but for what I, i'm doing this works just fine 
nice little kitchen area but enough about that uh, we're gonna get some coffee going and uh, some breakfast we're gonna do some bacon and eggs and then we're gonna pack up and we've got a whole bunch of forest roads we're gonna go explore we are going to start on the west end, where we've already started, on the west end uh, of the Washita National Forest up above North Amina. And then we're going to work our way east all the way to the end of this part of the National Forest. And uh, it'll be all forest roads. And we are mapping this run and we will be submitting to onyx and hopefully they'll be able to put those on their app and if you run onyx you'll be able to see the exact route that we're taking and they'll be in sections so you can combine those sections and see how we ran all the way across this part of the washita national forest if y'all haven't subscribed to the channel be sure to subscribe because there's a whole lot more coming and there's a whole lot already on our channel and uh, hopefully some of the stuff we have on there you'll find of interest and might even help you out. So let's get some coffee and we'll continue this later. Okay, guys, a little bit about the Nitto Ridge Grappler. Uh, 265-65 R17, we upsized our tire on the 2021 Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk. Now, we have loaded the Cherokee with full overlanding gear. So, all the weight that we would have on a long overlanding trip is loaded on the Jeep. And we traveled several forest roads, forest trails, and uh, we experienced no rubbing. And we did hit some pretty good suspension testing trails. And as you can see with the dirt that's inside the fender well, there's no markings. Actually, I do see a mark I see a mark right here and that is can be heated and pushed back so not an issue but I doubt I got enough flex that it did hit a little bit right there not an issue though now on the front you can see there's no marks nowhere in the mud and I had already cut out just a little piece up in there. But there's no heating anywhere in the front. We'll walk around to the other side. No heating there. And we're good there. And I don't think that's a hit. Because it's got, it's got mud on it. And it don't look like it hit over here. This one's designed a little bit different than that one over there was. So I'll heat that one spot, push it back, and we're good. Because I don't think it'll flex any more than what I flexed it. Uh, I am going to air them down a little bit. We got here late evening, so I didn't take the time to air down. But I will air down this morning. And uh, But they did fine. They rode fine. And I feel way more confident having some side protection on my tires running these roads like we do than I did with those Firestone Destination. So just to update on the tires, uh, I'm so far I'm happy. And we'll see y'all later. Okay, we've got camp cleaned up. Probably Pat can't see it now, but and we're headed back out the road that brought us to this camp. Uh, 
a tree in the road right here. And we're gonna continue on exploring Washita National Forest west to east. Okay, this is the place we went up in, and you see it says open seasonally. It's closed to vehicles from March 1st to August 31st, so it just opened. This is the sixth or seventh trail. I'll have to figure it out when I get home. But this is one of the roughest trails we've been on through this west to east in the Washita National Forest. This one's actually had some pretty good mud holes and really rough rocks, uh, tight squeezes between the trees, narrow trail, these big bumps going across the road where they dug trenches for the runoff. So that's slow go, but so far we're doing okay. I just wanted to do a little recording of the harder trail. You can see what we're going through here. section is not what I would call terrible and we'd had zero issues going through it it's just rougher than what I normally would go through if I was going to rate it from 1 to 10 I think honestly I would have to go a 4 although when I made this video I was thinking more along the lines of a 7 but I think a, a level four would be more appropriate. Mm, that would be the hardest section that's in these multiple sections on this route. And like I said, hopefully you soon, you'll be able to see these sections on the Onyx map. And I just made this video, it's a lot of pictures, basically just so you can see the different sections, the different roads, and what you're gonna be traveling through. This does make a good long weekend trip. There are also other roads you can travel. Some of these roads do dead in into private property. There are short sections that you will actually drive across private property on the roads. I saw no signs that 
uh, prohibited you from passing through the roads. So as far as my map showed, everything was legal. But all the roads that we traveled were open. And even where we camped with the gate, you can bypass that gate and the road goes through. So I hope y'all enjoy this route. It is a, a fun route to do, a little bit different than a lot of the areas that we travel, but we had a blast and look forward to exploring more. Have fun, y'all. Okay, got some pretty rough stuff here. But I need to get through it because going back the other way is going to be a pain in the butt. But I want to walk up here and see what all I got to maneuver through. Because I don't want to backtrack. This trail was pretty, pretty rough. This part here ain't that bad. Just slow going. And I'm close to the end of this one to where I can actually probably come out on a asphalt road if I need to. Looks like if I can get to that one section right there, it's not going to be all that bad. Thought I'd walk ahead so that way I don't have to try to go back through stuff like this. This one is pretty bad. But I think I see light at the end of the tunnel up there. So I'm going to try to come on through here.
Hey guys, we've done some rock climbing. We've putted through deep ditches and we came out to what I would actually call gravel road. The uh, Cherokee through that section and that was really bad. I, it was bad enough that I locked the rear locker. I had it in low gear. I had my eyes closed. <laughs> and, and there was a ledge that we actually the back end kind of got sideways on and uh you know i just backed off and repositioned a little bit and we got over it no problem uh that is the hardest thing this cherokee's been through with me and i hope it's the hardest thing that i put it through because i'm not into uh, that kind of rock climbing and it's not major rock climbing like you do in a lifted wrangler but for this uh, Cherokee it's pretty good uh, but saying that this thing climbed through them things like a uh, billy goat man it just gripped and went so I'm glad we're on a somewhat actual gravel road and we're think we're fixing to come out on the road that's going to lead to a main road if the rest of the roads continue to be like the ones we were on i'm not going to continue the route east i'll be finding alternative ways to go so we'll see a pretty decent gravel road here uh, I'm not sure if this one was section 7 or 8 but I'll clear all up when I upload stuff so on this uh, so on this route you you have a pretty good diverse terrain that you're going to deal with from easy to I'm going to say that one area we come through was like a 7 it's honestly the hardest thing I'd want to put my Cherokee through. I wouldn't want to do anything any harder than that. And there's, you can't be afraid of getting pinstripes because some of these trails are so narrow and there's stuff sticking out. So pinstripes could be a possibility depending on how wide your vehicle is. I haven't looked at mine yet. I'm sure I'm gonna have to do some buffing when I get home. But this is pretty narrow, so I'm sure it did less pin scrapes than a lot of other vehicles would. And like I said, that hard part may not be a seven for like a Wrangler that's on 33 plus inch tires. And I'm gonna have to stop the video because this. Side Okay, I decided to stop and take a look at everything and make sure everything's still connected. So I've got my fridge plugged in down there and I want to rip that cord out. Make sure my pin's still in on this. It looks good. Everything looks good. Nothing looks, no welds are broke. Take a look at the vehicle. So far, oh yeah, went through a bunch of spider webs, and I'm even taking the spiders home with us. Spiders up there on the top. That green is from going through all the tall grass that's on that trail. really not seeing anything that I don't think I can buff out now this is work in process but that was a boo-boo on our trail in Oklahoma 
everything I'm seeing, I think I can buff out. No hey, problems. There's hand marks in my seat from Griffin. <laughs> it's pretty tough, wasn't it? I got to stop while we're stopped, and we're gonna get some some snacks. I was gonna look too. I've got mud. We definitely flex these tires. It may have been a little bit of rubbing down there because the mud is flat, but I don't think it rubbed the uh, plastic. There's no rubbing up front. I already knew I was doing a little bit of rubbing right here, just a tad. No rubbing there. Look pretty good. Now I aired these tires down to uh, 25 PSI and I'm glad I did because going through that rock section was, uh, like I said, it, it's not something I would have chose to uh, take the Cherokee through. <laughs> This bridge for to relax my butt muscles after gripping the seat so hard. Get off a little butterfly. Oh, cool. Let's see if I can find them in this. Pretty cool. They're all over the place. Yeah, there's a really cool one up there. That round rock over there. Okay. All right, well, we're gonna grab some snacks and keep trucking because we're going home this evening.
Okay, we stop at Mount Zion Cemetery. Sierra. Check out a campground.